It's Solving Your Driver Problem, where we bring guests who have proven strategies that just plain work for driver recruiting, compliance, training, and retention. Today, we have Matt Leonard. He's the CEO of Military Talent Source. What they do, they help you hire vets, and they cut through all the red tape and bureaucracy. Uh, there's a great workforce out there in veterans, and there's a lot of great benefits for you out there as employers. Surprise, it's not easy to navigate. Matt makes it easy. Um, so he's been doing that for four and a half years. Uh, before that was the Lewiston Auburn Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. He's the president and CEO there. And before that, why is he involved in military talent source? Because he was the made up to a senior chief petty officer for the Navy and served in the Navy for over 20 years. Matt, first of all, thank you for this, your service, my brother. And it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, thank you. And thank you for having me. Um, Really good stuff that you're doing. Uh, really excited about the mission and, and partnering with y'all. But let's let's talk about a day in the life here because it's what is this about? This is about vets and and helping them transition. So some people may not be working with vets. So would you mind just giving us the one on one? What's it like for a veteran who's reentering quote unquote civilian life? Yeah, for a lot of them, they may not even have the experience. You think of anybody that joins the military right out of high school or college graduation, they serve their time and now they're getting out. They've never worked in the civilian world, so they don't know what they don't know. So when they're quickly introduced to a civilian hiring process, a lot of times and frequently, they have problems navigating um, that route. So one of the things we do is help them understand what's being asked of them and help employers understand what they're asking of veterans that they are hoping to bring on board uh, their company. Makes sense, right? You, you signed an 18, you never had exposure to it, to what this type of hiring process is. Do you mind unpacking a little bit on the specific struggles that they face and, and how do you help them overcome those struggles? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of companies nowadays are using applicant tracking systems. There's some kind of online process that people have to engage with. And unfortunately, when we're doing technology-driven hiring, it's almost binary. It's a yes or no type style of equation. So, so that military person doesn't think in that manner. So if you're saying, do you have three to five years industry experience, that military person may say no, but, and then they're dead in the water because the system isn't designed for the butts, right? And it's thinking outside the box. Like, you know, when you think about driving experience, they may not have legit civilian CDL driving experience, but some of those same individuals were driving uh, tankers in Afghanistan through minefields in combat, um, and we're not linking that together. So right. our processes are, are tangibly driven for resume bullets. Do you have this degree? Do you have this experience? Do you have this certification? But the reality is I think most employers would prefer to hire character and train the proficiency but our systems aren't designed that way. Exactly. Um, and some things that we were riffing on before this with the client is setting up the applicant tracking system. So, so we're working together and mm -hmm. you know, creating a workflow in that ATS specifically for vets. Right. And so that that way uh, you might have a different process for them. Mm -hmm. um, meaning, and that catches the attention of the recruiter, right? They might know how to interact or might not just see it black and white A or B and then leaning on your team, right? Your experts who can help them coach them through, right? We're just talking about working, walking them through it and asking those questions like, yeah, you answered that question correctly, but, but not really, because this is how the game is played, right? So it's some of those, here's, here's the tricks of the trade over here and, and trying to get an interview scheduled. Right, yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things we look at and, and, and you know, some very large companies have failed miserably lately trying to do it in an automatic fashion. Think about the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Google had a commercial. They spent millions of dollars on it about how veterans could put their military occupational specialty code in the Google machine and it would show them jobs. Fail miserably. My job in the military was a hospital corpsman. I did medicine for 21 years. I put my number in, which is 8404, and it shows me jobs to be an EMT. Right? Totally disassociated and doesn't take the full picture of the person. 
Mm. I'll give you another example. Groton, Connecticut, most of the list of people there are working on nuclear submarines, meaning they work on nuclear reactors hundreds of feet under the water. Now, they may not have a college degree. They may not have certifications that you're looking for. But if I asked you, would you want to bring somebody in that has an ability to work on a nuclear reactor as a service technician or to work in your company, you'd probably say yes. So how do we create that environment to grab that talent? No, I mean, it's when you break it down like that, it's so silly, but you know, our systems are so rigid um, that they struggle, right? We haven't designed them for it. And I think that's probably, that was my takeaway from talking with you over the last couple of weeks. Um, Matt, so I'm, I'm, I'm an employer. Yep. I've got driving positions open. We all know we've got driving positions open for days out there. Right. What makes a veteran an attractive candidate for a trucking or a bus company out there? Right. So off the jump, I think a lot of people agree, you know, veterans, generally speaking, do what they're told to show up on time. You know, they'll stay off their phone. They take direction and con constructive criticism very well. Um, so that off the jump, of course, there's a lot of other programs out there that either have monetary incentives or are some other uh, tangible incentives. Um, you know, every state now features a military waiver of skills test, which states that if a, if a veteran was driving a particular class of vehicle in the military, they can pretty much show up their local DMV and be issued their CDL license, which is a huge advantage when it comes to the training dollars spent on getting somebody that license. And then there are other things, you know, there are economic incentives like work opportunity tax credits. There are registered apprenticeship uh, incentives. And there's a VA has an on-the-job training program, which, which is an economic incentive to the employee. The benefit of the employer is it's, it's company driven. So it prevents and ensures that that employee isn't going to be stolen away for a dollar more an hour. So as you said at the top of the show, there's a lot of advantages, not easy to navigate for the employer, which is what, what we hope to bring to the table, because I like to tell people, we basically write your term paper for you. You know, we're going to go through all the minutia so you can take full advantage of, of, of the benefits. Yeah, and I want to highlight something deeper just from the, we, since we've had the opportunity to talk in, in preparation for this chat, that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but if I recall properly, there was a, there's a scenario, right? If you're in an apprenticeship and you follow the right program, there's a way for the vet that he or she can make, say, an extra 25K on top of the salary you're going to pay them. The government provides that. It's not coming out of your pocket. And that's what you alluded to of you can't leave for a dollar more because if they did, they would lose that 25K bonus. Do you mind making sure I got my specifics right and telling that story? Yeah, absolutely. The Veterans Administration of on-the-job training uh, piece of the, the GI Bill does just that. It's one of the most underutilized pieces of it. It is employer driven, employers get certified for it. And what it allows for is the employee receives their monthly housing allowance as if they were attending college just for being a good employee, again, and tied to the employer. So they can't just roll down the street if that employer doesn't have it. So let's talk about a metropolitan area like Boston. That veteran is gonna receive $3,000 a month tax free on top of the pay and benefits that the company is providing them. It's up for 26 months. There is some kind of prorated uh, step down, but we can mitigate that through different types of um, program segmentation. So in, in Raleigh, that's about $1,600 a month tax-free. In DC, again, about 3,000. So it depends regionally where you are. And that veteran is essentially getting a $25,000 you know, bonus tax-free on top of what they're getting paid for being a good employee. So, I mean, Boys and girls, that right there is, is a reason to, to check this out from a veteran standpoint. Um, Matt, do I need, and I, this is, I had the assumption I was wrong, that I would need to have some sort of, say, finishing school program in order to work with NTS. You also provide uh, access to veterans who have been in the civilian workforce for years, and they come back to you for, for career placement. Can you tell us a little bit more about who you have in the hopper and how you help place these uh, men and women? Yeah, so me and my team, a lot of us are actually veterans ourselves. So we come from different services and, and you know, officer and enlisted. And because of that, we speak that language. You know, you can think about military service as its own unique experience that has its own language to it. So when we're searching for opportunities, we come across a lot of veterans, our network is veteran centric. And 
there are veterans who are experienced in the civilian world who aren't being fulfilled. Either they want a career change or, you know, they're ready for some kind of transition and they, they have that rapport with us. So they open up to us. So we talk to veterans who are looking for uh, companies who may have better equipment, who companies who may be uh, family oriented, um, whether it's family, they want a better quality of life for the veteran or they want to work for a generational uh, style business that's family owned. So there's a lot of qualitative metrics that veterans engage us with to get advice for lack of a better term. Um, so, you know, we have very experienced veterans all the way down to someone who's still active duty looking to get out and trying to figure out what they want to be when they grow up. So whether we're bringing in an experienced veteran or helping you build your farm system, uh, we're kind of have that holistic veteran centric style to us. So Matt, I've, I've been in this industry for about eight years now and every, you know, at, at shows, I see trailers wrapped, right? Proud of hiring veterans. So I think intuitively yep. the industry wants to get behind this, but probably doesn't know how or, or where to start or why. Um, but maybe besides like the feel good on it, what are the top three reasons we should be hiring veterans as employers in transportation? Yep. I say one of the good things is I, I think about right now, what companies in the United States of America right now that you know on the top of your lips have a veteran hiring initiative or strategy? Amazon spends millions of dollars a year marketing to veterans to bring them on board and they do it. They put their money where their mouth is. They're all over the place. Companies like Tesla, Bank of America, Americans, Fortune 500 companies all have veteran hiring initiatives and have people on staff just recruiting veterans. They wouldn't be doing if it wasn't good for business. So how do you get that level of expertise at a, at a valued price? You engage companies like MTS. And of course, we're proud to you know, partner with Avatar Fleet. We can show you the way, right? Not to get all Star Wars-y. But I'd say secondly, number one thing right now going on in, this, in, in the United States is diversity and inclusion. So how do you have a diversity inclusion strategy? Well, hiring from a veteran a pool is going to give you that because there is more diversity in the military as compared to the U.S. population as a whole. There are more persons of color in leadership positions in the military. There are more females in positions of leadership in the military. The education level is higher um, for minorities in the military and the civilian world, right? So the military is disproportionately more diverse than the United States. So when we're recruiting veterans, you're also getting diversity and inclusion, which is great for business. Um, and, I, and I would say lastly, we know, like you said, uh, intuitively veterans uh, normally bring a lot to the table. They have a lot of intangible benefits that we'd like to add to the work staff. They have leadership experience at a very young age. Uh, they do what they're told to show up on time. They're drug free. Let's face it here with uh, more and more states allowing the use of marijuana. If we're talking to a veteran before they've gotten out, they don't start using marijuana or they're, or they're used to being in a drug free environment. So those intangible benefits are why you want to bring them on board. So let's hire character and train proficiency. Dig that. Um, and your points valid, Matt, that the big dogs out there, right? Jeff Bezos and his crew, they don't do anything if there's not an ROI behind it. They're very disciplined about that. No doubt they know how to spend it from a marketing standpoint, but there is a strong return. Uh, it's really well documented that a more diverse workforce performs, right? It's, it's take the feel good stuff out of it. It's better for your business. Right, right. Bottom it's line. good for, definitely good for business. Um, and, and I don't know if the answer is there, there may not be uh, here because veterans are just human beings um, and human beings come with their own sets. Is there any specific challenges to veterans to take an effect when looking to hire? And we talked about how systems may not be meant for right. them in the hiring process, but let's say we get through that. Mm -hmm. Is there any challenges to take in consideration or is it just like any other human being? Yeah, I mean, I mean, partly it's an adjustment. You're, you're leaving one culture for another. And let's face it, less than one half of 1% of our country serves in uniform. Let me say that again, you know, 0.4% of our country serves in uniform. So you have an overwhelming minority joining a majority mm. and uh, some kind of, that can be difficult. You know, part of what we do is they have somebody they can reach back to and say, is this normal or not? You know, if you think when you're in the military, you don't negotiate your salary and benefits, you know, so that's a weird thing for somebody coming out of the military to be expected to know how to negotiate appropriately and really to know what's feasible or not. So we do a lot of that coaching in the process. Mm -hmm. Um, and let, let's, let's talk about um, the, 
what for a lot of people is the thousand pound gorilla in the room, right? Is that media tells us that veterans are broken a lot of times. They have PTSD, drug use, suicide. And the reality is that that's an overwhelming minority of veterans who have issues that make them not ready yet. We're really talking about the 98 to 90 percent of 99 percent of veterans who are ready for the workforce. So so I like to say all the time that, you know, veterans aren't charity cases and charity isn't a hiring strategy. We're not talking about that. We're not a nonprofit. We're not asking you to make a donation. We're talking about you to get invested in the strategy that's going to help you make more money today. That's mm -hmm. what we're talking about. Veterans aren't charity and charity isn't a hiring strategy. So for those veterans, there are other services that help them get ready. We're not talking about those individuals. So um, employers do get afraid because they go get bombarded by the negativity in the media. That's not what we're talking about. Right. No, and, and I think that is uh, part of the reason I phrased the question the way I did is. Right. I think they're just human beings, right? And, and and whatever challenges vets come is the exact same as any other human being, right? We all got a, <laughs> we all got something. Right. Um, so what is, are there any like pitfalls that companies should avoid um, or ways that you help them overcome? Man, I think it's less less about, again, less about the vet as a human being, more right. about the process of right. navigating the bureaucracy you know, of the VA, of whatever the, of whatever thing in Washington, right. you got to go cut red tape, you got to cut. Right. Uh, any pitfalls that you recommend companies to kind of keep their antenna up for? Yeah, I'd say when you're, when you're going through the bureaucratic process, it is mind numbingly difficult. It is very, very difficult. It's almost adversarial, whether you're dealing with setting up registered apprenticeship or the state approving agencies, I don't think they intend to be that way, but it is that way. We have Derek Fasten on board who comes from us from the Department of Labor background, and he kind of becomes that company's champion to navigate that process. And I think a lot of our clients would have testimonials to say that without Derek, it wouldn't be possible. So that's a pitfall. Your HR department doesn't have the time to recreate the wheel and, and learn and become an expert in these programs. I understand that, but don't let that be an excuse to not have it. Talk to us, we can help navigate that. It's inclusive of our model of fee driven, you know, monthly flat fee versus transactional. Um, create that environment that's gonna help draw the veterans. And then another pitfall is we talked about the applicant tracking system. Is your process driven to hire civilians? Because if, if you're outcome focused and your process varies, you're not gonna be happy. But if your process is dialed in, you're gonna get the desired outcome. What a lot of companies pitfall they fall into is they think that from an EEO perspective that the process has to be the same for everyone, but you can have multiple input streams. So we can have parallel processes and you can have a veteran specific process as long as it's equal and vetted um, that can be more open-ended. You know, we can have it designed to get the veteran that we want. So especially say, don't, on the screening, right? Those are those yeah. AB those silly qualifications, right. which, which we're pushing in this industry, Matt, to kind of get away from anyways and shift them more is like, who should you prioritize? Right. But the old school mentality of screen and don't spend your time on the wrong people, that's not this game when you're on the wrong side of supply and demand, right? Any lead is a good lead until proven otherwise. And right. you need to nurture them, right? Bring them in the door. Hey, I called them three times. They didn't answer me. Throw them in the garbage bin, never talk to them again. That's an old school mentality that doesn't fly anymore. Yep. Right, we got to yep. remove the barriers. Absolutely. I, I talk to clients all the time and I say, you know, the traditional hiring process is a ruling out process. We're trying to get rid of people. Let's adopt a strategy and a paradigm shift. We're trying to rule people in, particularly with the veterans. Let's, let's not find excuses to not hire them. Let's find ways to bring them on board because that diamond in the rough can be, can, can be a grand slam home run, right? It's worth investing that time. Matt, have you, I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Do you have yeah. any data on veterans uh, from a retention standpoint, like sticking around longer than a pick and a poke on the general public? Yeah. So, I mean, I think generally if everybody were to hop on the Google machine right now and Google it, you're going to find that a lot of people say that veterans are going to leave that first place of employment within the first year at about an 80% clip. 
And that's again, goes to what we're speaking about. It's the hiring process, right? They become so frustrated that they're grasping at straws and they grab jobs that they're not a fit for, that we knew they wouldn't be a good fit for, but they needed to earn a paycheck. So they're latching on to companies that they're gonna leave just like anybody else would leave because it wasn't the right fit. So when you create veteran hiring initiatives and you create an environment to bring that veteran in, they, they're gonna be loyal and they're gonna stick with you longer than what we're gonna see uh, national average. Because one, it's in their economic best interest, right? If they get there on their job training, and I know for 26 months, I'm gonna make more money simply because this employer has created this opportunity for me, you know you're gonna keep them. And then the stats show you that any employee that you've held for two years is unlikely to leave for a lot of different reasons. So yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's the data. Okay. Hey, want to end on this. So what, um, what success stories do you have for clients? You know, as, as if, I, if I'm a client of ours out there listening to this, you know, what should I be thinking about uh, good can look like? Share a couple success stories if you don't mind. Yeah, I'd say right off the top, I, I'd ask the employer to think about your best employee, your employee of the year, your employee of the month. How frequently do you find out or have knowledge that they're, they're actually a veteran? right? And almost universally, a lot of employers say they're a top employee or employees have a military background. How can we do more of that? And that's what we do. So we had a company, solid waste industry that was looking for an operations manager. And we were able to provide a, um, a female lieutenant junior grade separating from the Coast Guard, Coast Guard Academy grad, had been managing big numbers of, of people and dollars. And because we were able to make that introduction, she was hired, that hire never would have been made without, without that investment in, in the services that we provide. Um, from a diversity standpoint, we have an individual who, who is giving up basically a $90,000 a year gig that he has right now contracting to go work for one of our clients to, be, to become a propane service technician. Why? Because that person is 100% invested in learning propane because he wants to own his own propane company one day, right? Those are the intangible benefits and quality uh, propositions that we want to bring to the table. It's not a quantity proposition, right? Anyone who's promising you that they're going to bring you 50 veterans a year is, is probably blowing smoke, right? We're going to talk about what are, what, are, what are your goals and objectives? What is kind of the scope? And, and how do we create the processes to achieve that mission? It's not we are not a temp for hire agency that's saying we're going to charge you 3,300 per, you know, transaction and churn and burn. We want to place somebody that's going to be there for the long haul. And we really enjoy when we bring in people who are, you know, being around for coming up on five years, we place people who are now moving up the leadership chains and are, are being, are, are actually becoming decision makers in companies, which, which is great for us. You know, our, our hires tend to stick around. I dig it, man. Um, so I got, I like to end it with one personal question, but before yep. I ask that, anything else you want to, as just anything else I didn't ask you that people should be thinking about? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, when you, you know, there's a lot of things that keep business owners awake at night, hiring enough people to keep, keep making money is one of them. So I'd ask them if you know, veterans are going to be a good hire, then, then why haven't you pulled the trigger? Right. So I think that's, you know, why are people being gun shy? You know, the answer. So, so let's, let, let's bring on the solution and, and let's talk. That's what I tell people. Yeah. I appreciate it, Matt. So enough of this, this is the personal question that I like to yeah. end the podcast with here. It's so we get to know you a little bit. Yeah. What accomplishment are you most proud of and why in your career? Wow. So, um, Whew, that is a personal one. So, okay. So I spent 21 years in the United States Navy. I was a hospital corpsman. That meant I did medicine for my entire career, whether it was battlefield medicine to three years at the Pentagon. And I did a lot of things and including five and a half years of critical care at the bedside, taking care of uh, patients. I, and I did multiple tours of combat. And I think one of the things I am most proud of is during that time, treating dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of critically ill and wounded um, individuals, anyone that I reached who was still alive when I reached them survived, uh, which is a pretty extraordinary stat if you understand um, 
what normally takes place in critical care or in combat is that, uh, you know, failure is not an option. You hear that a lot. Um, and in medicine, failure means somebody dies or lose life, limb, eyesight. So one of the things I am most proud of is that during my tenure, I was blessed uh, to have been trained by some of the best leaders in the military and some of the best training and that I was able to do my job and that anyone that I um, had the honor to take care of uh, did not die on my watch, which, which um, is probably my most proud uh, achievement. Matt, you might have the best answer to that question, at least from a moving, <laughs> moving the soul yeah. standpoint. Right. Cool. Matt, it's been a pleasure to get to know you personally uh, over the last couple of months, but uh, really respect what you're building at MTS. I'm excited what we're going to do together here. And thank you for educating the listeners, my brother. We, uh, we appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me and uh, hope to chat with you again soon. We will do. All right, everybody. Appreciate it. That was another episode of, of Solving Your Driver Problem. Today's guest, Matt Leonard, bringing some real proven strategies on successful ways to bring vets in your organization. Um, we'll have a link to his site if you want to learn more in the notes. And Matt, thanks again, brother. We'll be talking soon. Mm-hmm.